Welcome to Krima Media's Polity. I'm Martin Joaquin in Johannesburg. Joining me is a political analyst Aubrey Machiki to discuss the goings on on the South African uh, political arena. But today we are focusing on the 2016 local government uh, elections. Welcome to the show, Aubrey. Aubrey, we know that the ANC is to launch its uh, local government election manifesto on the 16th of April. What, in your view, is going to be the issues that the party is going to emphasize as it seeks a fresh mandate in the various metros, uh, municipalities, towns, and so on and so forth? Well, I think what is a problem for the ANC at the moment is the image of its leader, President Jacob Zuma. Mm -hmm. And uh, opposition parties are going to try and cause collateral damage to the party by focusing on the weaknesses of um, its leader. But um, what we have seen in the past is that voters, particularly those who vote for the ANC, tend to distinguish between the party leader and the party itself. Mm -hmm. And therefore, the approval rating of the party is not necessarily an indication of the approval rating for the leader of the party. So I think what the ANC will try to say, first of all, is that it has done very well when it comes to local government. Now, whether, of course, that is consistent with the reality of most people uh, on the ground is maybe a totally different story. But mm -hmm. what they will try to emphasize mm -hmm. is their record of delivery at local government level. Mm -hmm. They are going to, once again, emphasize the need to deal with uh, poverty and um, inequality. Uh, they will probably also emphasize local economic development um, and make promises about where in the country at local level you have economically depressed communities. They are going to try and take those communities out of those uh, uh, conditions of economic depression. But the opposition, on the other hand, I think will be focusing on key areas. Uh, for me, the key areas will be Johannesburg, Swane, mm -hmm. Eguruleni, mm -hmm. and uh, Nelson Mandela Bay. Um, because one of two things is possible. Um, either the ANC will lose one or some of these four metropolitan areas, mm -hmm. uh, or alternatively, the um, official opposition in particular mm -hmm. um, with the EFF will come very close together um, to taking power away from uh, the ANC. Mm -hmm. I'd be surprised, of course, if the ANC retained Nelson, Mate Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm -hmm. um, but as I've said before, I don't think any party will uh, achieve an outright majority in Nelson Mandela Bay. The strongest possibility at the moment mm -hmm. is that of uh, opposition parties coming together to form a coalition and shut the ANC out of power in Nelson Mandela Bay. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Eguruleni, Johannesburg and uh, Tswane, I think that is going to be much more difficult mm -hmm. to read. The campaign and the content of the campaign will give us a clear idea mm -hmm. of how far the EFF and the TA mm -hmm. are from taking these uh, metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. According to South Africa's uh, electoral legislation, the local government elections must be held between the end of May which is when the current term of local government expires in August. In your view, do you see the ANC government opting for an early election day, or are they going to wait until as late as August? Well, there has been a debate um, mm -hmm. in the ANC for some time now mm -hmm. about uh, when the election should take place. Now, as you know, there is no ruling party in the world that will pick a date that is to its disadvantage that rather pick a date that will be to their advantage and to the disadvantage of their opponents. Mm -hmm. But given the fact that the ANC is going to have its manifesto launch on the 16th of April, mm -hmm. um, I think it is obvious that uh, the election cannot be held in May. That would be uh, too soon. Mm -hmm. But if you look at other factors, um, including the fact that if you look at a party such as the EFF, Mm -hmm. It would be to the advantage of the ANC to have a long campaign period mm -hmm. uh, so that you cause the EFF a crisis when it comes to the availability of resources because then it would have to sustain um, th those resources over a longer period than would be the case 
if we had an early election. Mm -hmm. But um, a late election can be a disadvantage uh, to the ANC because it gives the EFF, the DA and other op opposition parties a longer period of time mm -hmm. uh, to harp on and focus on the failures of the ANC at the level of the local state. Mm -hmm. it, it gives op uh, opportunities mm -hmm. to opposition parties um, to have a longer period where they can have a sustained attack on the party leader mm -hmm. and on the party, on those who are deployed in local government and how they have failed mm -hmm. to deliver on promises that were made during the last election. So that would be the disadvantage uh, for the ANC. On the other hand, if you look at the DA, the disadvantage of um, a longer period of campaigning is to attack Musi Maimani, who is inexperienced mm -hmm. when it comes to leading the party mm -hmm. in a, an election campaign. Mm -hmm. and, and the longer the campaign goes, the greater the possibility that contradictions will appear in what uh, he is saying, and uh, the, the greater the possibility that he will become vulnerable um, to attacks, especially in debate uh, situations. Mm -hmm. Um, with people from the ANC and, and other parties. The, the, the advantage though for the ANC and the DA of a longer campaign is that both of them have the resources to run a longer campaign mm -hmm. and the EFF doesn't. But what may cancel out all of these advantages for the DA and the ANC mm -hmm. is the race question. Okay. Because as, as much as issues of poverty, issues of uh, services, um, and so on are important to voters. Um, I suspect that the parties are going to use race as a political football to disadvantage one another. And what the EFF mm -hmm. has done so far uh, when it deals with the question of race is to deal with the political economy of race by focusing on issues such as land and the economic disadvantage mm -hmm. of the majority. In this regard, both the DA and the, and the, and the uh, ANC have done poorly. The ANC calls itself the leader of society. But when it comes to the issue of race, it has failed to provide effective thought leadership. Um, and, and therefore, um, it seems the EFF is, is better placed to exploit the race question mm -hmm. to its, to its uh, advantage, even amongst the black middle class who may not agree with the EFF ideologically, but in terms of their experience in corporate South Africa, mm -hmm. which they deem to be alienating and culturally hostile, the message of the EFF on race may resonate mm -hmm. with uh, not only black people in general, mm -hmm. but uh, the black middle class in uh, particular, amongst them, young black mm -hmm. professionals. Mm -hmm. The DA, on the other hand, I think, uh, the race issue, if it does become a big issue uh, during this year's campaign, will be a headache. Mm -hmm. um, because you will remember that in 2013, uh, the D8 discovered race when at its uh, policy meeting at the end of 2013, mm -hmm. it came out unambiguously arguing that uh, race remains the main indicator of disadvantage in South Africa. Mm -hmm. Thus creating the expectation that it will be more forthright, less ambiguous, mm -hmm. and less ambivalent about the relationship between race and the need for redress. But that has not been the case. Mm -hmm. um, even under Musi Maimani, the DA has tried to be all things to all races, has mm -hmm. tried to eat its uh, race cake mm -hmm. and have it, or to have its race cake and eat it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this they've tried by reaching out to black voters while at the same time mm -hmm. trying to retain their traditional support base. Mm -hmm. And I think the yes. biggest failure of the DA at the moment, particularly that of Musi Maimane when he articulates the DA's position mm -hmm. on race, is the failure to deal with the race question mm -hmm. as an internal DA dynamic. 
He pretends uh, that the race question is something that is external to the party, when actually mm -hmm. it is, yes, external to the party in society, mm -hmm. but it is a dynamic that is internal to the party, and there is very little evidence mm -hmm. uh, of the party trying to deal with that internal dynamic. Mm -hmm. In your view, will the EFF benefit from the challenges that a long campaign may pose for the ANC or the DA? Both the DA and the ANC are establishment parties. Mm -hmm. If you look at the approach of uh, the EFF in what it says outside parliament and what it does outside parliament and what it says and does inside parliament, it has positioned itself as an anti-establishment party. So that's one of the ways in which it tries to create a distinct identity mm -hmm. between itself on the one hand and the DA and the ANC on the other. Mm -hmm. And also by doing so tries to posit a radical vision for the future of the country mm -hmm. and forcing the ANC to articulate a much more left-leaning position mm -hmm. um, on policy issues. Now, of course, if you saw in one of the discussion papers for the National General Council last year, mm -hmm. there was a warning that the ANC must not try to outleft the EFF. Mm -hmm. okay. And the disadvantage of that is that that might leave the EFF um, in a position to make very populist promises um, mm -hmm. that are left-leaning in content. Mm -hmm. uh, to the disadvantage of both the DA and the ANC. On the other hand, that can also be to the disadvantage of uh, uh, the EFF because if the content of what they promise uh, is seen to be on the far left, mm -hmm. um, it may be deemed unrealistic by too many voters who otherwise would vote for, mm -hmm. for the party. But for the ANC and the DA, uh, the greatest challenge they face in relation to the EFF is to deal with an argument that might arise mm -hmm. that unlike the EFF, they are parties of the past and they have very little to offer as far as the future is concerned. Mm -hmm. But the three parties have a challenge. I've already referred to the possibility that race might become one of the issues. Mm -hmm. They must be very careful about how they deal with the race question. Um, because they can damage all of us if they are reckless mm -hmm. about how they deal with the race question. Mm -hmm. um, if they deal with the race question in a manner that divides us even further, um, even if it wins them votes, they must think about what life must look like after that election. Mm -hmm. I believe that there is going to be stiff competition among ANC supporters to be on the party's electoral list. How bad is the situation? Can we just sketch that for us? It's very bad. I mean, uh, you've seen killings already um, of uh, ANC members by other ANC members, or alleged killings mm -hmm. of ANC members by other ANC members. So the competition for uh, people to be on the ANC's election list has become quite fierce. Um, but that conflict, in some cases, has become violent. Mm -hmm. Now, if you look at the numbers in terms of the ANC's electoral performance between 2004 mm -hmm. and 2014, it's very clear that the ANC is losing ground. We can quibble about the extent to which it is losing ground, but what is not in dispute mm -hmm. is that the ANC is losing ground, especially at national level. And the pressure the ANC is going to come under, mm -hmm. firstly at national level, is a reduced ability to send the kind of numbers to our national parliament mm -hmm. and the provincial legislatures it has been sending mm -hmm. since 1994. Mm -hmm. And if this extends to local government, what you are going to see is fierce competitions for fewer and fewer posts. And that might be a cause of internal instability mm -hmm. uh, for the party. But the fierce competition between ANC members to be on an election list mm -hmm. is also an indication of how bad the economic conditions are. Because if you look at provinces such as Mpumalanga, such as the Northwest, such as Limpopo mm -hmm. and the Eastern Cape, the ANC and the state are the main instruments through which the middle class is created. So mm -hmm. to be part of the middle class, 
you have to be on the ANC list, win a position, mm -hmm. get a job in, in, in a municipality or elsewhere mm -hmm. in the state, and through that become part of the middle class. Um, otherwise, you remain poverty stricken, uh, like the rest of the people around you. Uh, mm -hmm. And therefore what is at stake here is the economic position mm -hmm. of individuals who are contesting uh, positions on the ANC's list. And of course, if you are already a councillor, mm -hmm. um, this competition might cause you to lose your middle, your middle class status. Mm -hmm. And literally, it may, in some cases, people will go hungry mm -hmm. um, if they lose their position. So the stakes, the stakes um, are very high. Okay. Uh, because this is about the ability of the ANC to send the number of people to the local state to mm -hmm. the provincial state and the, na and the national state mm -hmm. that it has been able to send since 1994. Mm -hmm. But that number is being reduced and uh, that is causing fierce competition mm -hmm. for a reduced number of uh, opportunities mm -hmm. for ANC members. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, uh, Obi, for your time. You're most welcome. Well, that was political analyst Obi Machiki. I'm Martin Joaquinho in Johannesburg. Thank you.